Hi again. We're going to be looking at how to throw a ball and how to analyze it and break it up into components like a, the velocity for the y direction and the velocity for the x direction and, and what formulas to use and how to use them. And then later we'll solve some problems. But this time we'll just look at the diagrams that are being used in the book and how do we interpret it. Okay, if you throw a ball, and I'm pretty sure all of you have done that at one time or another. Uh, if you throw it to a person, it you can throw it kind of like, you know, go off like that. And what we're going to be looking at is we're going to analyze it right when it leaves your hand. And then later, where will it end up? But right now, we just need to be able to look at, okay, what angle is it leaving your hand at? What is the velocity? And how do we divide it up into the x and y components. So this red arrow right here, that represents in say meters per second, how fast is the ball leaving your hand and at what angle relative to the ground. We'll let the ground be the, the horizon part. Okay, so let's take a closer look now. We, we've done vectors before, so let's just break this down in, and see what we can expect. Now we know that a triangle, and here, here we build a triangle with uh, the velocity and the ground. You can see that. When we have an angle there, we know that we can use sine and cosine and, and try and get uh, the, the different sides, like this and this are equivalent in, in size. Uh, when you draw little vector diagrams like this, I'm sure you remember that uh, this side also equals that side there. Okay, so if you don't remember, just pause for a second and go look up your old old stuff. So, so here we are. We, we need to look at this in the way that, all right, how is the y component affected by gravity? We know that gravity wants to pull the ball down. But remember that gravity doesn't work in that direction at least not on our planet. <laughs> you might be able to find one out there, but unfortunately Earth just pulls you straight down. So we're stuck with gravity in uh, the y direction, and that is going to affect later that the ball will go up for a while, and then it, you know, it, it's up at the maximum, and then it comes down. But in the x direction, you're going to have a constant speed, just this part of it, okay? Uh, that's real important to remember, and Earlier, we in, in Physics A, we did some of that, but not, not in such a detail. That we'll, we'll get a little deeper now. Okay, so this is how we're going to break it up. And if we look a little closer, like what, what is in your book, and if you don't have the same book, don't worry about it. Uh, they're all pretty similar. I'll just move the graph over, and we'll look at the formulas, and we'll see if we can make sense of, of what's happening here. So here they are we have this part right here and that you see i color code it okay that's going to be the velocity in the x direction and it is based on here, we just have to erase that okay you can see that this means initial velocity so that's right there so it leaves your hand at oh just say 10 meters per second then that's what we would use there Whatever it is, that's the thing you're going to be plopping in. But, but think about it. If this red arrow here, this one, if, if that's your initial velocity, then obviously you can't have the same velocity down here in the x direction. Okay? Because th that, that just wouldn't make sense, would it? Because if, if you draw a, a triangle, <laughs> me and my straight lines, uh, you, would, you would see that this can't be as long as that. All right, so, so think about that. If it's uh, confusing, just, as always, pause, okay? So to find the velocity in the x direction, we're going to need that. And you know from trigonometry that you get this side by using cosine, and that's why this is here. So the cosine of the angle times the initial velocity gives you that. And now underneath we have... Uh, the x position. And here something extra comes in. 
Uh, if, if this is velocity, we also have that there, okay? That part didn't change, but now we have it multiplied by time. And what is velocity times time? Well, that's going to be a distance. So it's, it's going to place the ball somewhere, okay? So that's how it's used for the x direction. Let's look at the y. Now, here, that is our velocity in the y direction. And we get it in a similar way. Uh, we would expect to use the sign because we want this side. And the sign was going to be this one divided by this one, okay? And then multiplied by the velocity, then that's all. You're going to get the thing that you want. Uh, that's, that's just basic trigonometry, okay? So we get the velocity, but then remember that gravity plays around in the y direction. And gravity wants to pull that ball down. So it may be going up to start, but <clears throat> as soon as it leaves your hand, gravity is pulling it down. Every second that goes by, it's, it's pulling it. So it, it may go in an arch, but you can see that it doesn't go up as much and finally gets to the maximum, then it gets back down. So we would expect that the y velocity would change, unlike the x velocity. Because here you, you can see, sure, the x position changes, but the x velocity is going to be, once it's set, it's set. When it leaves your hand, you know, we ignore air resistance, okay? So we're not going to have that just yet. So the x is, for all practical purposes, constant, the x direction velocity whereas the y is not, and that's really important. If you, if you mess up the y direction, you're going to get a lot of really wrong answers. So you'll need to remember the velocity and the position, and they're different, but you can see that they're related, okay? Now, the, the y position will be dependent on the time and gravity, okay? Just like the velocity is, is going to be changing with gravity, but you can see that they change in a different way. That's not surprising, because remember that w with the earlier video, we had the uh, SVT diagrams, the, the position, we had velocity, and we had acceleration. Now, the acceleration will be constant uh, because it's, it's gravity, and so the gravity will be constantly affecting the ball with the same thing, but that means that the velocity changes, okay? So try to differentiate the two. Uh, we're not solving any problems with this video. Just wanted to introduce you to the formulas, the little graphs, how to, how to break them down, and why they look the way they do. So in another one, we will solve some problems. So, All right, see you next time.